I'm Peter, uh, and I'm going to be talking about ballot design uh, and the role of ballot design in elections in the United States. Oh. Nope. 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 I don't know. All right. Um, so Marvel comic book designer Mar uh, Brian Reed once said that everything's designed, but few things are designed well. And in the United States, our ballots are not designed well. Now, ballots have a one primary purpose. They allow a voter to express their intent uh, effectively, quickly, and easily. But as you'll see, especially in uh, elections like the 2000 Fred uh, Florida presidential race, ballot design actually uh, doesn't allow voters to express their intent easily and effectively. This is the Palm Beach County, Florida, uh, infamous butterfly ballot from the 2000 election. And if you wanted to vote for the Democrat, Al Gore, who's listed second on the ballot, you actually have to punch the third hole. And what happened is a lot of voters were confused and ended up punching the second hole, which is actually a vote for Pat Buchanan, um, who got <laughs> 3,500 votes in Palm Beach County, which is heavily Democratic, which was 2,600 more than in any other county in Florida. And so this shows that ballot design is a real problem. This is a, another example from Florida. Uh, this is an electronic ballot. You'll see that the first, is, the first part is actually a congressional race, and the second is a gubernatorial race. Well, a lot of voters actually missed the first race, and 14% of voters undervoted, which means they didn't cast a ballot. Uh, in the neighboring county, 2.5% of voters undervoted. So it shows that this ballot design is affecting turnout in that race. A more effective design would be to just el eliminate the second uh, race and put it on two pages. Something similar happened in Hamilton County, Illinois. Um, when we read, we naturally read left to right. And so when we're looking for whom we're going to vote, we find a name and we make our mark. But you'll see on this ballot, where do I make my mark? Do I make it to the left or do I make it to the right? Well, a lot of people got confused. 10% of voters just undervoted in that race. I mean, they didn't even cast a ballot, um, which is a lot higher than the 4.5 statewide average. Easy way to fix this, just put a box around it so people don't get confused about where one race stops and another begins. <laughs> Something happened similar in Wisconsin. Um, you'll see that a lot of voters got confused about where the gubernatorial race began and ended. So you'll see it actually begins on the first column underneath the straight party voting and ends on the top of the second column. Well, what happened is a lot of people either undervoted or overvoted. It means they missed the race entirely or they voted twice, once in each column. Um, so 12% undervoted, which was a lot higher than the 1% statewide average. In a more effective design just to start the gubernatorial race in the second column so people can easily find it. Um, something similar happened in uh, New York City senatorial race where two, two, two races happened simultaneously. The first one for Schumer was on one line, the second was on two lines. Well, what happened is a lot of people voted twice in the second race because it was on two lines and people got confused about where the race ended and the next one began. So you had 114% more overvotes in the second race. Keep in mind, this is on the same ballot, so people are voting tw twice. An easy way to fix this is to make it vertical, not horizontal, like the example here. So why is this a problem? It's really a problem because elections in the United States are split over 5,000 different jurisdictions. There's nearly 190,000 different precincts in the United States, which means there's a, a different ballot design for roughly every 694 voters. So there's a lot of different ballot designs. But it's not a sinister problem. It's just about priorities. You'll see on the left, this is a referendum about whether or not Adolf Hitler's doing a good job. Yes is a lot bigger than no. This is a sinister ballot. The right is just a really poorly designed Ohio uh, primary ballot. So the, the problem, it's not sinister. It's about priorities. It's because the people that design ballots are election administrators not designers. They don't have the practical skill set to properly design a ballot that allows the voter to show their intent quickly and easily. And the case in point is Teresa Lepore, who is the election supervisor in Palm Beach County, Florida. She's the one that designed the uh, butterfly ballot. She designed it herself. And she designed it, she's a Democrat, mind you, and this hurt the Democrats. She designed it because she thought it would help seniors. She was wrong. She's not trained for this. Um, now, what's happening in this? Uh, the Brennan Center for Justice at NYU is doing a lot of research in this area. And there's actually a group of designers called Design for Democracy who are helping election administrators uh, create mock ballots. And this is an example of one of those mock ballots. You'll see it's a tricolor ballot. Uh, it clearly delineates where one race ends and the next one begins and allows the voter to, to effectively, 
quickly and easily share their intent, which is the goal, the goal of ballots. So Design for Democracy is doing a lot of great work. What can you do to uh, make this, well, what can you do? You can make it an issue. It, not much is being done because people don't think about it. Usually people go through their life seeing one ballot. You know, they're not one that sees the 694 uh, different variations. You see yours and no one talks about it. So everything is designed, a few things are designed well. But in the United States where we hold the vote to be sacred, we should make sure that our ballots are one of the few things that are designed well.